Coming up on today's show, the Gen 2 Formula E car will shake the world. Toyota's Chinese EV push and electric Morgans are coming. I'll explain more. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Monday, the 20th of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Thank you to myev.com for helping make the show. It's the first marketplace made specifically for electric vehicles. Now, they created this totally free marketplace that simplifies the buying and selling process and help you learn about EVs along the way as well. And I'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to the 63 patrons of the podcast whose generosity means that I get to make this show and hopefully entertain and inform thousands of listeners every day about a brighter future. Well, the Gen 2 Formula E car is coming. I picked this one up from motorsport.com a couple of days ago. I've been meaning to talk about it, actually. The newly crowned Formula E champion, Jean-Éric Verne, believes people will be shocked by the progress the series will make when its Gen 2 car is introduced. For the 2018-19 season, well, the next season starts on the 15th of December this year in Saudi Arabia. They're taking a keen interest in electric cars lately. (laughs) Then it goes to Morocco, Mexico, Hong Kong, China, Italy, France, Monaco, Germany, Switzerland, and ends up in New York on the 13th and 14th of July next year. Well, motorsport.com say that Nissan's going to take over from Renault at the EDAMS squad, while BMW becomes a full Formula E manufacturer. Mercedes are affiliated with HWA, not a full Mercedes works team, uh, but they are joining ahead of the German market entering the series alongside Porsche for season six. We're looking forward to uh, doubling the battery capacity and doubling the power with cars running at 200 kilowatts as the standard battery setting. Formula E correspondent Alex Kalinoukis invited Jean-Éric Verne to the Autosport offices to talk about his incredible season in Formula E. Uh, He collected his first Formula E driver's title uh, with Tachita and they beat several larger squads to secure second in the team's championship, uh, narrowly missing out to Audi in the final race. I'll put a link to the autosports.com interview in the show notes. Well, a Reuters report over the weekend said that Toyota will build additional capacity at its auto plant in China's Guangzhou. A company source said in addition to beefing up production at a factory in Tianjin City. Now, with Toyota, it's a case of do as I say, don't do as I do. Here in the UK, Toyota have sensed I presume the money, the market, is in hybrids, but soft hybrids. So they're running this big ad campaign over here, uh, selling you hybrids, which I quote, self-charge, and which you don't have to plug in. So they're really going big on not plugging your car in and and sort of downplaying plug-in hybrids and, and really promoting hybrids that you have to put diesel and petrol in. Whereas in China, well, in China... It's a very different story. Toyota plans to build additional capacity in Tianjin to produce 10,000 all-electric pure BEV battery cars and 110,000 plug-ins every single year. In addition to boosting manufacturing capacity, Toyota also plans to significantly expand its sales network and focus on electric car technology as part of their strategy in China, the sources said, declining to be identified as they are not authorised to speak to the media. Well, we just heard from one of the world's biggest automakers, but what about one of the world's most specialist? For nearly 120 years, the Morgan Motor Company has been building three- and four-wheeled vehicles in a tiny factory in Western England. Uh, The company's iconic design is instantly recognisable, largely for how little it's changed over 83 years, reports Roadshow by CNET. Well, today, Morgan makes three vehicles and five different engines, but soon they are going to introduce an electric car to the fleet. Well, fewer than 200 employees build... About 800 cars per year. Uh, the cars are still made largely made by hand, uh, though modern manufacturing methods are employed where necessary. 
Well, moving on to a BMW, and it's always interesting to see what the mainstream media are saying about electric vehicles, the public perception, the general sentiment that's out there in the wider world. Well, the Sun newspaper here in the UK, a bit of a divisive title, I must admit, not everyone's a massive fan of it. Uh, they've been looking at the BMW i8 and say that we're only halfway through 2018, and this column has already been graced by the Jaguar I-Pace, Renault Zoe, Nissan Leaf, Porsche Cayenne e-Hybrid, and a plethora of hybrids from Volvos and Lexuses. Uh, it's clear the battle has been won by Team Green over the last few years, say the sun. In the early days, EVs and hybrids were easy to criticise, but that's changed. Cars are no different to any other technology. Remember early mobile phones, they ask. Uh, you could use them as a doorstop once you'd finished a crackly call which was probably frying your brain cells. Uh, if you are still resistant to the idea of electric cars, I reckon the BMW i8 Roadster will make you a believer. I'll put a link to that Sun article in the show notes. Well, Jack White staged a private concert for Tesla on, uh, on Friday to kick off the weekend last weekend at their Fremont factory in California, where he also drove one of their upcoming models according to rollingstone.com uh, the jack white concert was uh, envisioned to help uh, lift the spirits of tesla workers as they continue to work on the new uh, model 3 after falling behind in the production schedule uh, model s in there as well according to the detroit free press jack white said this and i quote bit of a long quote but i think there's lots in here that we can unpack jack white said i'm a huge fanatic and supporter of everything tesla has been doing since day one i'm proud to say i was one of the first model s owners in nashville which i think is the greatest automobile ever made it's been a thought of mine for a few years now that i'd love to do a free concert for the employees at the fremont factory I believe that what Tesla's doing is so important for the future of how we look at car design itself. The added benefits of its help towards fixing climate change and taking the world away from the internal combustion engine are incredible, says Jack. Making cars that are safer for the occupants and others on the road also fulfil the pioneered dreams of automobile entrepreneur Preston Tucker, which ultimately is the definition of the American dream. I'm very excited to play for Tesla's employees who are doing so much good for the progression of technology and the world right now. I'll put a full link to that Rolling Stone article in the show notes. Well, Zach over at Kling Technica has been posing questions and he's been asking so many questions now my brain's going round in circles. It's about the new Nissan Leaf. And I can't work the answer to this one out. I don't really have an opinion on it. Well, I mean, I've got lots of opinions, but I can't work out which one is the most likely. What do you think to this? The new 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in the Leaf, maybe it'll be 64 kilowatt hour, is coming before the end of this year. I think deliveries will start early next year, though. It hasn't been confirmed still that it has thermal management, but the pack comes from LG Chem. They have thermal management on their battery packs. That's almost a dead cert, then. It's unclear what Nissan will do, says Clean Technica, in terms of the lower leaf trims. Will the lower trims use the battery as well, this new larger long-range battery pack and keep the same basic price segmentation as years past that's one way of doing it right so everyone gets the bigger battery pack and they have the trim levels and the price will probably go up a little bit or will they use the 2018 battery for the base trim right and have significantly lower base price and that perhaps makes the leaf a twenty-five thousand dollar or cheaper car that's the first one that's going to do 150 real world miles for twenty-five thousand dollars so maybe they'll put a long range battery in the top spec increase the price of that maybe subsidize a little bit the base model and genuinely have a twenty-five thousand dollar ev or will they use the new larger battery across all the trims Maybe they'll still drop the price a little bit. Maybe they want to kickstart those sales, which haven't been going stellar. I mean, they've been okay, but not blowing your socks off. Lots of questions to ask. If you have any answers, any opinions, leave them in the show notes. Uh, leave them in the comments section on YouTube and Facebook. Well, let's go to the rumour mill 
As the last story today, after rehiring the Tesla engineer Doug Field, it seems that Apple's ready to take the leap into the world of electronic cars, electric cars, uh, says the Apple specialist website iBulletin uh, that I picked this one up from. The car, which we talked about recently, Project Titan, has uh, involved nearly a thousand Apple employees developing the vehicle in an undisclosed location. Well, Doug's now rumoured to have been working with Bob Mansfield, quite a legendary name at Apple. He's a veteran there. He revived the car project and he heads it up. According to a reliable source, but who isn't named, so caution, it said the car's in development at the moment and could hit the market between 2023 and 2025. It's expected to redefine the market of electric cars, they say. Integrating hardware and software in a way that's never been done before. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple do with it. They haven't really had a revolutionary product since the iPad, all respect to people who bought the earbuds. I mean, they're very nice, but they haven't changed the world. And the the, the Apple Watch, well, it, it keeps on going, but they need something. But by 2023, five years to wait for a revolutionary Apple product. I'm an Apple fan, by the way. I'm, I'm well and truly signed up. I've got everything Apple. I'd love to see them do something sooner. Maybe with somebody else's cars, uh, the hardware, but they put the software in, like Waymo's doing with the Jaguar I-Paces and the Chrysler minivans and things like that. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. We'll keep your comments coming in as well for this week's question of the week. Do you? This is the question. Do you need all of the electric range? How much range is enough? And what's your ideal range? How does that tie into battery charging speeds? or charging locations. Keep your thoughts coming in. Had loads of comments on YouTube yesterday. I'm putting them all, pulling them all together in the next couple of days when everyone's had a chance to catch up on the weekend shows and had their say. Uh, I'll put the best ones out on the air. In the meantime, all previous 216 episodes of the podcast are on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you subscribe, you get them first and free and automatically. And if you want to say hi on the social, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.